Hello, and welcome to this second in the series of films about um, redox chemistry. This one covers the key terms um, that you really need to understand when you're starting out on the topic. And the trouble with some of these is that they can have very different meanings depending on the terms in which we define them. So we're going to look at reduction and oxidation in terms of oxygen and hydrogen, as well as electrons and oxidation number. And we're also going to use oxidation numbers to see if we can tell whether chemical reactions are redox processes or not, and how those redox processes could be split up into half equation. OK, so let's start off by looking at oxidation. Now, both reduction and oxidation were studied long before we had any idea about electrons and oxidation numbers. And so they, had, um, they were defined in terms of oxygen and hydrogen. Okay. Now, the reason I've put these two definitions in bold and not this one is because this one is a useful guide. It's a kind of rule of thumb, but it ceases to be of any use if the equation or the reaction doesn't have any hydrogen or oxygen in it. Okay, so we're going to try and stick with these two methods of defining oxidation and reduction. That is to say, what's happening to the electrons and what's happening to the oxidation number. Now, this one, I suppose, is the more intuitive. Oxidation is an increase in oxidation number. Um, but this one, in case you can't remember it, a loss of electrons. We've got this, um, well, hopefully, aid memoir, which is um, oil rig. That is to say, oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. OK, so uh, three different ways of defining it. Let's just have a look at how those work in this equation. Now, clearly, the sodium has gained oxygen in becoming sodium oxide. So it's been oxidized in that sense. Let's have a look at what's happened to the sodium. Well, it starts off as a sodium atom, that is to say Na, but it ends up as Na+. Plus. So it's lost electrons in becoming a positive ion. Okay, so it satisfies that um, definition too. Now, if you look at its oxidation number, it starts off as an element. So, of course, its oxidation number has got to be zero, but it ends up as an ion, monatomic ion. Okay, even though there's two of these monatomic ions, and its charge is plus one, so its oxidation number is plus one. Okay, so three different ways of looking at oxidation there. Um, this reaction had oxygen in it. Um, this next one's going to have some hydrogen in it. Um, but here's reduction. Now, reduction is basically the opposite of oxidation. So that is to say it's a loss of oxygen or a gain of hydrogen. Now, um, again, that definition isn't that important, but it can be a useful guide. All right, but we're going to try and talk about reduction and oxidation in terms of electrons and oxidation numbers. So let's have a look at those here. Now, uh, we're going to use our rules again. We're going to remember that these two things are both elements. So they're both starting off at zero. In fact, let me just change the colors there. I'll treat oxygen, uh, hydrogen as red, and we'll go for nitrogen in blue. Now, using the oxidation rules again, oxidation number rules here, um, hydrogen's in a compound here. There's no ions present, so I can't tell from its charge what its oxidation number is going to be, but I know that hydrogen in the compound is usually plus one. Okay, and this isn't a metal hydride, so it's plus one. I've got three of those, okay? And each one of these ammonia molecules has to have an oxidation number, overall oxidation number, in other words, the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. Okay, so that means that nitrogen here must be minus three. And hopefully you can see that the oxidation number of nitrogen has fallen. So that means it's been reduced. In other words, it's gained hydrogen, okay? But remember, there might be some equations that don't have hydrogen or oxygen in. So it's been reduced. Hydrogen went up, okay? So it's been oxidized, as it happens, but the nitrogen is the one that has been reduced. It hasn't really, it's not really that clear to see how it's gained electrons, um, because it hasn't got a charge, because it's part of a covalent molecule. Um, but if you think about it, it's more electronegative than hydrogen, so it will have the lion's share of the electrons. So that's how these things um, relate to covalent molecules. But again, we don't need to worry about that too much. OK. Right. Let's have a look at what we mean by, now that we've defined oxidation and reduction, we can look at what reducing agents or reductants are. 
Now here's another equation where uh, we could identify what's been oxidized and what's been reduced. So let's start off with the sodiums. They're an element, so they're zero. The hydrogens, they're plus one. And the oxygens are minus two. Okay, now sodium here is in a compound. So it has its group one element, so it's going to be plus one. Oxygen minus two, unless it's in, uh, sorry, oxygen minus two, unless it's in a peroxide, but it's not here. And hydrogen plus one, unless it's in a methyl hydride, but it's not here. And here's hydrogen in the zero oxidation state, or with an oxidation number of zero, because it's an element. Okay, so what's been um, reduced? Well, the hydrogen has. The hydrogen's gone down from plus one to zero. And you can see that the sodium has gone up. Okay, now because the sodium reduced the hydrogen, okay, the sodium was the reducing agent, the one that did the reducing. Okay, so an agent is someone who does something. A reducing agent is someone who does the reducing. And the reducing agent will always be oxidized. Okay, so because the sodium has gone up in oxidation number, it's been oxidized, it's the reducing agent. Okay, now let's look at the kind of other side of that coin, I suppose, to look at oxidizing agents. Now here we've got aluminium reacting with chlorine starting off with two elements so their oxidation numbers are going to be zero here we've got an ionic compound so it's a bit easier to see what the oxidation numbers are here because aluminium forms a three plus ion so the oxidation number is plus three three chlorines attached to it or three chloride ions attached to it the whole thing is going to have to add up to zero so each chloride ion is going to have a minus one oxidation number Okay, so the chlorine has gone down, the aluminium has gone up, so the aluminium got oxidized, it was the chlorine what done it, okay, the chlorine oxidized the aluminium, right, so the chlorine was the oxidizing agent, the one that did the oxidizing, and again, um, the oxidizing agent here is the one that is reduced, okay. So that covers um, pretty much most of the key terms. We've just really got uh, redox reactions and half equations to look at. So um, here is an example of a redox reaction. How can we tell it's a redox reaction? Well, let's look at what we've got here. We've got silver nitrate. Now we know that the nitrate ion is negative. Okay, So that means a silver ion in this compound must be positive. So silver, so the formula of the silver ion is Ag+, so its oxidation number is plus 1. The zinc here is an element. Okay, Zinc here, there's two nitrate ions with it, so it must have become a plus 2 ion. It must be Zn2+. Okay, So it must have an oxidation number of plus 2. And the silvers, well, they have gone to being an element, so their oxidation number is 0. Now, if... You're looking at an equation where the oxidation numbers of substances are changing, then that simply tells you that there is reduction and oxidation taking place. So it must be a redox reaction. Read for reduction and ox for oxidation. Okay? Now the final thing, so that, that just basically all, the way we tell if a redox reaction is a redox reaction, have oxidation numbers changed? If so, it is a redox reaction. And the last thing we're going to look at in this film is how we can split a redox reaction into two half equations. Now, half equations are equations which basically talk about the oxidation and the reduction as two separate processes. Now, these two processes can't occur in isolation. If something's being oxidized, something else must be being reduced. But to see what the processes are, we often split it up into two separate processes. So the silver, remember, got reduced because it started off as Ag plus and became Ag. Okay, so its oxidation number fell. So we can say that the silver plus turned into silver atoms. Okay, but that reaction, that equation isn't complete because the charges don't balance, so we have to add electrons. Okay, and in fact, two of these 
uh, silvers gained two electrons and became two silver atoms, but we don't need to put the twos in. Okay, zinc, on the other hand, that turned into a zinc two plus ion. Okay, this is a zinc two plus ion here as this is the element, okay? So it got oxidized because its oxidation number went up. The charges don't balance, so I've got to put some electrons in. Now, don't worry too much if you can't understand how I got to these two half equations because that's what the next film is all about. But the half equations, or what half equations are, they're a way of representing the oxidation and the reduction processes as two entirely separate processes, which is... Um, kind of a, neat, a nice easy way of visualizing these things but just bear in mind that in a redox reaction you can't have one without the other so any redox equation can be split into half equations now as i say um the next film is about how to write these half equations so don't worry too much if you didn't get how i constructed those two half equations at the end of this film but if you do have any other questions please post a comment on youtube that really helps other people or come and get some help and get your questions answered. But try and do that before you move on to the next film.